got a real soft spot in my heart for games that break the fourth wall and examine the nature of game playing itself. I mentioned Bandersnatch in my Games I Played in December video recently, and while I pointed out that it wasn't exactly covering new ground, I still left it with a positive feeling. The ability to question what you're playing, and why and how, is a really novel concept, one that's been only getting more and more relevant in the gaming scene as of late. The most recent example of this came last year in the form of The Hex. It was designed by Daniel Mullins, the guy who brought us Pony Island in 2016, another what-is-a-game-really game that I really loved. And while the hex doesn't quite hit the creepy highs that Pony Island did, it's still got a lot of original ideas transferred into a deceptively simple game. The Hex is, at the core of it, a murder mystery. A collection of archetypical video game characters have all arrived at a spooky hotel in the middle of nowhere. They're having drinks and thinking of their past lives when the announcement comes that one of them is going to kill someone tonight. In order to solve the mystery, you play each one of them one at a time and learn about their histories while experiencing the games that they all come from. This is where the Hex is abundantly clever. Daniel Mullins only uses WASDA and mouse clicks for interaction throughout the entire game, but the genres switch up on you constantly. One minute you're playing a burnt-out Sonic the Hedgehog type in a platformer, and the next you're a wizard in a classic JRPG. Fighting games, top-down shooters, and even walking sims are represented in the Hex, and while they're far from complex gameplay style, there's a level of effort here that makes each level feel really unique and fun. As you progress, you realize that these game characters are only too aware of their roles in video games, and most of them aren't too happy about it. They treat it like a dead-end job, where they do the same things over and over, day in and day out. Sometimes they even instruct you on how to cheat so they don't have to spend so much time on one given task. This plot covers some really interesting ground. Some of the characters are so sick of their lives as games that they actively seek out their own destruction. Others enjoyed their time but have become has-beens and jokes, shadows of their former selves. It's kind of a toy story for video games, or a much darker Wreck-It Ralph. The question becomes, who do games belong to? The designer, the person who plays them, or the characters within the game itself? It's a question that leads to some pretty spooky moments. That bleak, creepy theme is further emphasized by the visuals themselves. Far from the most advanced-looking game I've ever played, that spare, sort of slapdash character style really adds to the misery that some of them are feeling. I mean, look at those faces. These are not characters who are living their best lives. In fact, the style sort of reminds me of those nihilistic, creepy Flash cartoons you used to see on Newgrounds in the early 2000s. Playing into the game within a game style, there are secrets to unlock in the Hex, including a secret ending that is far more satisfying, but just as abrupt as the original ending. It's worth taking the time to figure out, especially considering the full game won't take you more than a few hours at most to get through entirely. With the Hex and Pony Island under his belt, Daniel Mullins has officially got a reputation for creating games that are far more than meets the eye. I think I still prefer Pony Island for its creepiness factor, but there's no question that the Hex is a stronger storyline and a real sign that Mullins is expanding his ideas and trying out new things. I love these kinds of games, and the Hex is clever and spooky in all the right ways. Go pick it up. Hey, buddy, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy gets sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you.